Now that you've installed Visual Studio, let's get you going to developing applications. Our first application is going to be a console application. So let's get an understanding of the console environment. Regardless if you're using Mac or Linux, you could still follow along using this Windows version of the tutorial. Unlike a desktop or web application, a console environment does not have a graphical user interface to visualize your interactions. Windows, Mac, and Linux systems all have command line interface, which is a text-based program where users can interact without a graphical user interface. You can respond to prompts by typing a command and receiving a reply. Up on the screen, I am showing you a quick example of a command line application. Now let's walk through the uses for all three different systems. For Windows, open the command line, type ls or dir to display the folder structure. Now you should see a list of the folders and files on the screen. Another command to use is cd for changing or navigating the folder structure. Once you type cd dot dot, we will navigate up one level. This is what a console application is. You type a command and you get a response. For additional commands, type help. Now let's see how this works on Mac and Linux. For Mac, open the terminal window. Similar to Windows for Mac, we also use ls to display the folder structure. And also same thing with the cd to change folders. For additional commands, type help. For Linux, open the command line Similar to Windows, for Linux, we also use ls to display the folder structure. And same thing with the cd to change folders. For additional commands, type help. Now let's validate the Visual Studio installation process. To do so, let's create a new project. Open Visual Studio and in the Getting Started window, select Create New Project. Next, select c -sharp as a language, then select all platforms, and finally make sure to have console selected. There are many types of applications that you can create, and they are all listed by making these selections. We are just filtering the options. Now we can select console app, .NET Core, template, which can be used for Windows, Mac, or Linux system. Select next to start the wizard process for creating a console application. On the Configure Your New Project dialog, enter the project name, accept user input, then accept the defaults, and select Create. Visual Studio will now create a solution and add a console template project that prints Hello World to the console screen. Let's execute the project to see this in action. When we build the project Visual Studio, it executes commands to make an executable for our project. After a successful build, the console line window is launched. The application code is executed, which then prints hello world. If you want to run the application from the command line instead of through Visual Studio, navigate to where our project is located. Then open the bin directory, next debug, and then netcore app 3.0. Here we can see a few files and one of them is accept user input.exe which is our console application generated by Visual Studio build command. When we actually execute our program, what happens is that we go line by line and interpret what should be done. Since line nine is the instructional command, the application will execute it and print hello world as the output. What you just learned is how to print to the console. You can use the same action to respond to the application prompts. Now let's learn how to read from the console when the user enters data. We do this by writing console.readline. Notice that the command that we are using expects a string. This string is the user's data that will be typed into the console. Let's capture that string into a variable. A variable is a temporary storage that we can use at a later time. Now let's use our variable and echo that back out to the console. Let's build our project and see it in action in the console. 
Notice that when we execute our program, it does nothing. This is due to the program waiting for the user input. So let's enter some data and hit the enter key so that the program can capture what we just typed. As you can see, we now see the same data being echoed back. So now that we know how to capture and output data to the console, let's build a more interesting program. So we recommend you think before you code. So before writing new applications, you should write out the logic of the program before you start coding. Having instructions beforehand will save you time and prevent you from going back to rewrite what you've already done. Now, let's start writing a new application. This application will prompt the user for their name and the year that they were born. Then we are going to output to the console by greeting them and calculate their age. Let's use the advice we just mentioned about writing out what the program should do first. Ask the user for their name, capture the input. Next, ask the user for the year they were born, capture the input. Now display a message to the user, hello user, you were X years old. Now that we have our requirements, let's start coding. The first part is easy. We know how to display text to the console using console.writeline. Next, we need to read the input from the user and store it in a variable for later use. We are going to use console.readline. When we call console.readline, notice that it returns a value. Next, we'll do the same thing for the user's age by using console.writeline and console.readline. Now, we are going to do some math by getting users input for the year that they're born. Our variable so far has been a string. We can't calculate math on strings, we'll need to convert it to an integer. So to do this, we are going to learn a new command, int.tryparse. By passing our string, the command will output an integer value and also return true if the value can be converted, and false if not. Now that we have our value converted, we need to find out the current year so that we can calculate the user's age. Here is a new command, datetime.year. This will return an integer value for the current year. We are going to take the current year and minus the year that the user was born, and we should have their age. Next, all we have to do is greet the user by name and display their age. So let's quickly review the commands we have learned. We can output information by using console.writeline. We can capture the user's input by console.readline. We can store data into variables for later use. We know of two data types, strings and integer values. We can use int.tryparse to convert string into integers, and we can get the year by using datetime. Now our applications perform well, but we still have an issue. What if the user enters a value that cannot be converted into an integer value? Let's fix that by learning some logical operations. We are going to use the return result of the int dot try parse. We are going to use a conditional operator, if else. If we can convert the string to integer that we just outputted in our earlier console.write line, or else we will have to output a new response notifying the user that we could not calculate their age. Now you can create your own application by just these simple commands. So in our next tutorial, we are going to learn how to write and read from files. As always, if you get stuck, don't be discouraged and drop us a line in the comments section.